Guys, welcome to the podcast. I want to thank you guys, the listeners, for all the support that you show me. And I want to remind you that if you're a listener of this podcast and you don't subscribe, please do. Uh, It's free. It's no cost to you, but it helps us uh, with our rankings uh, as we show up there in iTunes. Uh, So please subscribe to the podcast. I want to thank you guys for your loyal and avid support. I want to uh, encourage you guys to continue to send me messages, send me emails. You can do so on my Instagram account, at jscottoutdoors. Send me a direct message. You can also send me an email at jscott, excuse me, uh, jscottoutdoors at gmail.com. Uh, you guys are amazing. I also want to thank the awesome sponsors of this podcast. I want to thank Go Hunt dot com gear shop Uh, you're about to hear from cody nelson the optics manager there Uh, anything to do with tripods binoculars spotting scopes uh, glassing techniques rifle scopes uh, anything to do with glassing cody's the man and uh, he's promised me that he will take care of the j scott outdoors listeners so make sure if you have any of those needs uh, to do with optics give him a call 702-847-8747 that's extension 2 you can also send him an email that he gets directly at optics at gohunt.com uh, i want to thank kuyu ultralight hunting that's k u i u.com make sure to go to their website check them out kuyu is the gear that i wear on all my hunts i want to thank kuyu for their sponsorship I also want to thank Canyon Coolers based right out of Flagstaff, Arizona for their sponsorship. I want to remind you to use the JScott19 promo code and you're going to get a 10% discount there uh, out of Flagstaff with Canyon Coolers. Uh, I also want to thank Phonescope.com. Uh, Phonescope, if you use the JScott19 promo code, uh, the JScott18 promo code works as well. Uh, you'll get a 10% discount. That is the uh, digiscoping device I use on my iPhone X to get all of the video and photos that you see on my Instagram. And then onxmaps.com, both the web map and the mobile app on the phone. They're incredible tools. Any any hunter in the United States should have Onyx Maps. You're going to get a 20% discount uh, if you go to onyxmaps.com, use the JScott19 promo code. We've got a really cool episode coming up uh, with Zach uh, Sandow of Onyx Maps talking about how we use it and talking about all the features. So be looking for that. Guys, let's get right to this episode. I appreciate your avid support. Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. I'm here with my friend Cody Nelson of 20 plus years, the glassing guru. Cody is the optics manager at GoHunt.com gear shop. Cody, how you doing? I'm doing good. Good to be here. As always, you, you let me come on here and talk about my favorite thing. That's right. Um, let's do some question and answer here. We've got a slew of questions here from Instagram followers. I'm ready. So let's just dive in. This comes from TJ the Tyrant. I like that name. <laughs> are you getting more for your money with Vortex than you are with Swaros? Um, I'll I'll throw my two cents in there. Um, I think Swaro myself for my eyes, I like them better than Vortex. I know that Vortex plays a great role with a lot of people that they're good and they are affordable. Um, I always say buy the best pair of binoculars you can afford. Uh, if that means beg, borrowing, and stealing, um, I'm all for that. Not the stealing. <laughs> um, but, you know, really, if you get a great pair of Swarovski binoculars, you're. I've had some that I've had for probably 20 years. Yeah. Um, buy once, pay once, um, you know, so... Cody, what's you know, your answer for getting more for your money with Vortex than you are for Swarovski? So, okay. There's no magic wand. Both are going to find game. I, I think it matters to a guy, you know, okay, I, I, I can spend money for people really well. And I can tell you, you just you have to buy Swarovski. But for some people, that's not in the budget. Um, for me personally, yes, I'm going to get more out of it because I also spend a crazy amount of time behind glass and I look at glass 
as an investment on my eyes and my time. So whatever helps me be more efficient during my time in the field, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to, to buy that glass. That doesn't mean that if a guy is sitting next to me and he's got a set of Vortex and I'm using Shirovsky, that doesn't mean that, that he's not going to see what I'm seeing. Right. But he may have a tougher time focusing. He may have a tougher time looking into what I call bad light. He may have a tougher time, you know, de- you know, he, his eyes may not be as in tune that mine. I, I don't know. There's a lot of those little intangible things. That's why that glass is, you know, the best glass in the world. So, you know, I, I hate, I just, I don't, sometimes I don't like, you know, telling somebody, oh, well, you know, you're, you know, you're, you can't buy, you know, this because it's, it's not good enough. Well, I, again, I, I come back to the thing is buy the best glass you can afford. And I agree with you, you know what, kind of pay once, cry once, but that glass typically lasts you a lifetime. And especially, I think there's kind of a little phenomenon out there, the better glass you could buy, the more people take care of it, and the longer it lasts anyway. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. So, I, and, I'm, and I'm telling you, I think that is an absolute fact that people, when they buy more expensive glass, and they are way more willing to take care of it. And guys... I have seen thousands of pair of glass come into us and they look like they have absolutely been drugged behind the truck. And I'm thinking to myself, holy cow, I've never had a pair of glasses look like this. I clean my glass almost religiously after every time out. I may not clean it, but it gets blown off and dusted off and the caps get put put back on. Take care of your gear. Let's um, talk about that real fast. You mentioned air. Um, when let's talk about cleaning your optics. You're bringing up my Christmas present. <laughs> yeah, let's ta- <laughs> let's let's talk about what you do with your optics to keep them clean. Um, quite simply, I always have some form of air to get the dust completely out. Um, I always have a, uh, like a, a makeup brush or, um, like my, I have a little Swarovski kit and there's, um, like a, a Vortex or loophole lens pen. I always use the brush to get the dust off first. Right. Um, cause the dust or and you do it lightly. You're not yeah, you, mashing, yeah, you're it not on. mashing it on. You're just trying to go over the top and get everything off. If you have, um, stuff that is stuck to the glass and I'm going to boogers, snot, chew, spit, uh, I mean, liquor. I've seen it. I've seen it all. Food, grease, um, salsa. Yeah. I mean, all the stuff that I've seen that's actually caked on the lenses. You got to have a lens cleaner that is in liquid form that you can kind of put in there. I always kind of put my Optux on the tripod, tip it, you know, sk- you know, skyward to so where it's I can falling down. It's falling down, and and I'll get that liquid on there, and I'll let that liquid kind of go in and then break it up a little bit and then you know kind of take a a a moist lens lens wipe and start wiping it up Um, but you got to get that sticky stuff or you know the stuff that's yeah off of there i think a good point is i always hold the binoculars where there would be perpendicular to the ground but a little bit tilted down Mm -hmm. when i'm using the lens pen to kind of just flick it so the gravity is going to pull it off exactly the last thing i want to do is rub anything in a circular motion or or left or right or up and down that's going to mm-hmm. take a little piece of granule of sand and scratch that. So I'm trying to just yeah. basically either airbrush, you know, or air, canned air and blow it off to get the dust and then take your yep. brush to get that to fall off before I'm actually applying any um, liquid wipe of any type to that. For the record, wool gloves are not good for glass. Any gloves are not good for glass, but yeah, well, yeah. So anyway, but yeah, to answer that guy's question, look, I think there's value in in both. I think there's value in getting the best glass you can afford, and and yes, I'm in a position where I represent Vortex and I represent Swarovski. Get the best glass you can afford. Only you can decide on 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 what you can afford, and. You know, we can certainly help you make the best decision that's that's for you. 
So that, that right, that's my best the answer. Next question. Hunt underscore XL says, Hey Jay, was just curious to hear some of your digiscoping info. Currently running my phone scope on my ATX ninety five. Um, that's a great setup. The ATX 95, mm-hmm. obviously ATX, he's talking about a Swarovski 95. He's saying ATX, which a stands for angled STX would be for straight. That's STX. Uh, so he's running an angled, he's running a, uh, phone scope. Obviously phone scope is a sponsor of my podcast. I've been using phone scope for, uh, several years now. Um, you know, the, the iPhone seven, eight, and 10 are phenomenal, um, I run a uh, iPhone 10. I run the phone scope adapter that you can actually take. I'm looking at it right now. I can actually take the circular portion of the adapter off. Um, so when I'm not out hunting, it's not as um, big in my pocket. Uh, and the technology with the phones has come an amazing distance. Um, I can remember. When I first started digiscoping, Dar and I would actually go down to Home Depot and we would go buy little <laughs> PVC pipes and we would get electrical tape and get stuff to fit uh, onto little cameras. And, and Dar's better at it than I am, but he would come up with all these little gadgets. Um, the phone scope is an amazing adapter, especially since the technology has come so far with being able to focus your photographs and focus your video Um, we've talked about it on a podcast before cody we had a similar question Uh, but there's different settings in this iphone 10 um, as well as the 8s i believe where you can actually go in and pick you know 4k video you can pick you know 1080 you can pick different settings Uh, and if you go on your camera functions you can go in and see those different settings um when before i switched to the phone scope i was using a swarovski tls apo apo adapter and i was running a canon sl1 camera and i was able to get some great video and uh still images as well and that tls apo adapter fits on to that swarovski spotting scope but it's a lot heavier unit. You're carrying a full-size bodied camera. Yep. Um, and, you know, especially with the 8 and 10 iPhone, once that's come out, and I've heard some good things about Android as well, uh, but but the last couple of years, I just don't see myself needing to do anything digiscoping other than my phone because then it's very easy to go to, you know, social media. It's very easy to text your buddy very easy to edit those videos where when i was using the sl1 i was having to download it onto my desktop um you know onto the hard drive i was taking up huge amounts of space then i'd have to get an editing program i was using adobe premiere just to get a you know a 10 second clip to send a dar so um i think with the atx 95 and the phone scope adapter depending on what phone you're running i think you've probably got the best setup out there yeah phone scope's been working real good for me um you know i think the the biggest thing to tell people is, is keep the power low on the on the on the uh on the on the spotting scope you know start low anyway um you're you going to get a better better image the lower power you that you get. Yeah, you want to focus it up real good, but you know, I mean, you're 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 going to you're going to get better images the lower the power and uh and try not to use you know, typically there's a little bit of vignetting um which is the black it, ring around the black the ring around there and you're going to want to expand or you know, zoom in just enough to get that out of there. I mean, look, if you're not trying to do like some photo contest and win something i i I get it but for you know for judging something or knowing or you want to send a picture to a buddy and say hey this is a buck i'm after you know i mean just get enough of that zoom out of there to where you can the, the 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 majority of the screen is out of the black so to speak um because the 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 more that you zoom in with the phone the more grainy the picture is going to be, right? You know, on the you know. About a month ago, I got some uh, a, a listener and Instagram follower from Nevada actually um, texted me and said, "I need you to look at some Rams for me and help me out." And and I tried to do so, and 
not specifically this gentleman, but I had four or five other guys throughout the fall sent and say, I need you to look at something. And then I get their images and it's just, and they're like, I know I need to buy a phone scope. I just haven't done it yet. And I'm like, Hey man, you can't expect to send anyone this image and anyone exactly. get an idea of what this Ram or what this buck looks like. Like the phone scope is very, very cheap. You can use my promo code and get 10 more percent off. Yeah. <laughs> but then you just pop it up and you get great video. Why are you punishing yourself and Correct. trying to hold the phone up at the right second at the right time and hold, you know, get the angle? It's ridiculous. Like, yeah, it, well, I mean, you can, you know, it, it, you, it's such an easy thing. Like my phone scope, I'm looking at my phone right now. It stays in the case the whole time. It's always on there. I use it all the time. So um, that's my answer to that question. Let's go to the next one. 85 or 95 on the BTX and Y. Here we go again. Um, You know, I use the, I I, I use the 85, um, you know, a lot last year. I'm used, I've been using the 95 a lot this year. Um, I have no problems saying that for me I, I really like the 85 as a if I just had to choose one and one only why now I say this because I already have the STX spotting scope in the 95 I, I get it I know why that's valuable to me I'm not saying that I don't appreciate the 35 power in being able to look at something like I'm watching TV. I, I, I get it. The thing I like the 85 for most of the time is in places where I'm going back and forth between, say, three to 500 yards and 2,500 yards. When I'm making those transitions and I'm having to go back you know, and, and I'm looking you know, at pockets of deer... I just appreciate the fact of how you get a little bit more field of view. I don't feel so boxed in, and that 30 power, you know, kind of brings you back just enough, just a little bit. So for me, I, 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 I really, I mean, I get it. I, man, it's, but this is what's so beautiful about the versatility of it. Right. Is yeah, you I mean, can, you can go 65, you, 85, you, or 95. Yeah, and I, and, and. Or I, all three. Or yeah, or all three. So l- let me let me ask you. Let me clarify something. When it's when you're using the 95 millimeter objective, the power on the BTX becomes 30, 35. 35. When you use the 65 or the 85, your power becomes, becomes 30. 30. Okay. So technically speaking, you have the best exit pupil, which means light to your eye comes from the 85 millimeter it's a two point i don't know i think it's a 2.81 or 2.83 versus a a 2.71 something something like that that may be a small difference but i'm just saying so you're noticing it i i I think the 85 is more comfortable to look through than the the 95 just just at face value I have the 65 and the 95, and I haven't spent much time in the 85. So there you go, Cody. I appreciate the feedback, Cody. Yeah. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Advantages, disadvantages, considerations when picking between 65 or 85 on the spotting scope. Well... I think it, it, it almost always comes down to weight for some people in that realm. Um, you know, I, you know, one of my favorite pieces to glass from is a is a twenty to six, or actually it's it's a twenty five to fifty by sixty five, you know, STS old school spotter, you know, like the original body style like HD, my, like my yeah, twin a, spotter, absolutely, um, fantastic piece of glass, really like it. Um, really compact in you know by today's standards and how big some of these optics are man it, it doesn't even feel like you're carrying anything it's it's so light um there is something to be lost in only when you have an 80 or 85 millimeter and 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 by the way that wasn't referring to the to btx was it no or, or the spotting, scope. The spotting scope 
Um, I mean, look, you're you're gathering more light with the 85. There's a reason, you know, why that's going to do better at at low light conditions. Um, if it's an STX or ATX, man, it's one of the best eyepieces in the business. It's hard, you know. I mean, they're both going to be really good, but you're just going to get more out of the 85, 20 millimeters more of of light gathering ability than the 65. I think it's a it, 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 it comes down to, is the weight more important to you than the low light gathering ability, period? Right, and I would say like my backpack hunt um, in the Chugach, we took the 65, and it worked fine, but weight was a huge concern. Sure. On any other hunt, I'm carrying the, the 85 or the 95. Sure. I just I, don't, that's... you know, unless I'm going extreme distances and I'm going to be out for 10 days and weight is the number one important factor, I'm always going to go with the well, bigger one. Well, and, and I say this, I almost don't go anywhere without my SDX and 95. I hope that, that that answers his question to the to the best of my ability. I have Vortex. This is from T Simmons Nine. I have Vortex razors. Should I upgrade binos first or get a great spotter? Mostly coos hunting. D- does it give power on the upgrade the binos? Just says Vortex Rangers. Well, um. Well, it's it's got yeah, it's got to be the razors, but okay. So he's he's got a great set, you know. They're, I'm assuming they're either twelves or or tens, and I could make an argument that because he's got pretty good glass, you know. I mean, he's got that that great middle of the road, you know, glass going into it. That I would go spend the money on the spotter, but then I depending on what glass it is, if he's got tens. I would stay with those tens and keep those tens and use those tens, um, but I would consider you know this is kind of like what we were talking about in, in the a podcast ago, meaning like do you go to the fifteens or do you go to the spotter? Like which one are you going to use most? And Jay, you know you're one of those guys. Um, you know Vince Watts and a handful of other guys I know. You know those guys were ten fifty in a spotting scope way back in the day, and nobody can argue with how successful some of the people are that we know that we're 1050 guys. Yeah, I mean, I use my 1050s forever. The the, the 1050s were awesome. So, you know, that's how I I get it. You know, if a guy's really trying to lighten up and he's not trying to carry a three optic system there, um, which some guys do not want to do that, I get it. Um, Use the 10s and go with the best spotting scope you can get. So I, you know, in that case, with a little bit of limited info there, I, I tell him to stay with his good tens and, and get a good spotting scope. He, I mean, you know, just he's going to be successful. But next question is, where do Trigicon rifle scopes fall compared to Swarovski, Leica, Leupold, and Vortex? In my opinion, and I answered, I don't know. I've never looked through a Trigicon. <laughs> Yeah, Trigicon, Jay, Trigicon makes Optum. I mean, they, they make really, really good optics. Um, they're really good in low light stuff. Um, you know, I, I, they've been used for years in, in you know, Dangerous Game and in and, and, and all kinds of different um, scenarios. Um, as far as, you know, they just typically don't kind of match up against, you know, some of the, uh, uh, you know, the Swarovskis or Leicas or, or Zeiss in that matter. Um, they're a good piece of glass. They've got great warranties. Um, I, they, they're, you know, they're coming out with new stuff all the time. Um, I would tell you just to keep your eyes on them and keep watching. Any downgrade or any downsides to the 10 by 42 ELs <clears throat> compared to the 10 by 42 EL range? Uh, is he saying downsides to the, to the regular ELs? Any downsides to 10 by 42 EL range over oh. the ELs? Um, well, yeah, I mean, you know, everybody always asks the question. I mean, you know, the EL range is not the Swarovision glass. The EL range was being created before really Swarovision that we know today, the field flattener and, and the glass that's in the ELs, was even created. 
So it's a little bit older technology. Uh, it, it's a, a little bit older technology. It doesn't mean that it's not to the highest standards. And yes, I would tell you that I think that there is a, and I mean you are splitting hairs, um, but you know I use eight by forty two EL ranges um, all the time, and that's you know I mean God that's one of the brightest pieces of glass I know. Um, and I just enjoy it and I've never really said, Oh, I can't see something versus that. And so I would tell you that the, I, I think, I think you're splitting hairs at that point. If you really need the range finder, go with the range finder and, and, and don't look back. Yeah. And I would say the lower light transmission in the range and they're a bit heavier. That's really, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the size, you know, the, the Swarovski still has the, the two humps. Um, you know, be careful when you're sizing them to a, uh, to a chest pack, um, you may need to go the next size up. Uh, it just depends on which chest pack you're getting. Um, but I would tell you that uh, um, for sure, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're still talking about one of the best pieces of glass in the world. Best strategy for locating bucks in the thick flats? Get high. Yeah, I said get <laughs> I, super I already, high. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I didn't even read your answer. Them. Yeah, get high. The only chance you have is to gain that optical advantage. We talked about that a little bit in another podcast. Uh, hey, Jay, what do you guys think about the <clears throat> 12 by 50 ELs? Um, well, first of all, I think it's, man, it's, I, I'm in love with them. Um, I don't own a pair right now. Uh, I love the 300 foot field of view. Um, I, I love the fact that you're, you know, 20% less power than the 15s, gives you a little bit better feel of view. The glass and the clarity on them is absolutely out of this world. Um, I think that for some guys, um, you know, if you're using 8s, you can certainly jump to a 12 and get enough gain, you know, power-wise, that there's that there, they could be a standalone glasser. Um Dar and I had this conversation a couple years back on Parker's hunt, um, you know, and it, it's kind of the it's kind of the first time that I ever just looked at the twelves and thought, you know, man, I I really do miss using the fifteen power. Um, so I found myself, you know, kind of maybe differing in opinion a little bit, um, you know, because the 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 new the new fifteens had come out and we were looking at those and. Um, man, it's, uh, the 12 is an awesome piece of glass and I have no problems recommending it, have no problems somebody using it as a standalone. Um, but I, 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 it depends on what you're doing, but sometimes I, I kind of got to give a little bit of an edge to the 15s for, for coos deer hunting. Um, but for everything else and maybe, you know, in other parts of the country, I can understand why a guy would, would choose those outright and stay with them. Yeah, I had the 1250s for a long time. It seemed like I used them quite a bit and really liked them. Um, if it was the only pair of binos I had, I think I could do great with them. But it, it seemed I always had the 10s around my head and the 15s were always in my pack. And it seemed like specifically coos and sheep, I would always grab for the 15s. I think if you primarily hunted mule deer and, and hunted uh, elk, um, and maybe even antelope for that matter, I think the 12s could be good. Yep. I have a little bit of a hand... Uh, vibration so I wasn't able to hold the 12s as good as I could hold the 10s um, but it seemed like I always grabbed for the 15s well, but I, I'm primarily hunting coos yeah, and, and I'll state for the record I, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna to, to mount the the 1250s on a tripod sure I, it's sure that, that but goes, if you were gonna use them as handhold right and more versatile yes they're more versatile than 15s but I would still say 10 by 42 ELs are the most versatile to to yes mount on a tripod and to handhold as well. Couldn't agree more. Let's say you absolutely had to purchase binoculars in the realm of vortex or like quality. What binos would you choose? This is a great question for Cody here. Um. Well, and he's a gift. Give uh, several. Well, and, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you. I'm assuming he's saying tens. You know, I've talked about the Vortex Razor a lot because the Vortex Razor and their ergonomics remind me the most of one of my favorite pieces of glass of all time, and that's the 10 to 40 Classics from Zeiss. Um, they feel small in my hands. They, they, they're small around my neck. They just feel good. Um, I, I really like the 10 to 42 Conquest HDs. 
I think that's a fantastic piece of glass. Um, you know, Loophold's got some products that are making headway, um, you know, with their, uh, um, their Santiams. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot out there that's in that, um, that, that mid range that needs to be considered these days. Um, so I, you know, I would just tell people, uh, the best thing to do is to get your hands and your eyes on them and look through them and make that decision. So, um, you know, you, you do, you need to kind of look at the Mavens. You need to look at the, the, uh, the, you know, there's some Nikon products out there and, and you guys, I'm, I'm not talking about just stuff that I sell. I mean, I realize that I can do that and I can shove you into that pigeonhole, but look at everything and make the decision for yourself. So, I mean, there's a, de there's a definitive line out there that thousand, you know, plus binoculars that I think is, it, it needs to be looked at. Question ever, have you ever used a 1.7 magnification extender with the Swarovski BTX N95? Absolutely. Uh, I, I think it's a worthwhile product. I think for, if you're not going to have an eyepiece available to you, I think it's, it, I mean, what do you mean an eyepiece? Well, what I mean, uh, like the regular STX or ATX eyepiece. Um, Meaning to go from a BTX B, to a spine. Yeah, so scope. that you can, you know, you can zoom in a lot, you know, that 50 to 70 power. But the 1.7 allows you, excuse me, to go to that, what is it, 51 power, like 51.5 or something like that. Um, and, and I think it's a usable source. It's, you know, I mean, it changes the balance a little bit, which, you know, most of the, the tripods and stuff that we're using these days, you know, that doesn't really even affect that very much. Um, but if you're just looking at the optical quality, yeah, you're going to lose a little bit. I mean, that's, you know, anytime that you go pump the power up, you're going to lose a little field of view and you're going to lose a little bit at the, at the, at the, at the, um, at the exit pupil, which is going to make that a little different. So, um, again, I, I think it's worthwhile if you're looking at them and you're, and you're using the 1.7, you're looking at a deer, you can absolutely tell whether that deer is something that you're going to go, you know, kill or not. Now. When you go to take pictures through it, you're going to lose. I'm just telling you up front that your pictures are going to be a little more grainy. That that There's just a fact. Yeah, and I think you also have to choose whether you're going to be glassing stuff at first light and you know going into it that your critical time period is the first 20 minutes. If that's the case, I would not use the 1.7 extender or... Uh, conversely i guess if you knew that you know you're doing some hunting and you knew that it's cold and maybe they're not going to be pop until you know 8 8 39 in the morning where you're going to have plenty of light that would be a situation where the extender it, would be would be awesome especially if uh, you're looking long distances with the sun at your back you've I, got to kind of predict right. what conditions you're I, going to I, be I in. answered this question yesterday for a guy and, it, it, and i just put it this way it's it's not the I'm not going to use the 1.7 as a piece that I'm just going to put it on and glass at that 50 plus power for, you know, the whole morning. Now, I may look at a certain piece of dirt or an angle of, you know, mountain or something that I that I think I need to have the power just to get in there and look at better. But the, the truth be told, um, I'm going to use it for more of, you know, trying to to you know evaluate a trophy or maybe evaluate the legitimacy is is that a deer underneath that tree or is it not so i'm i'm that that's what i'm using it for best camera video camera setups to video western style hunting this is uh matt bid again um i really don't know i've been out of that camera game i have a old g10 and um, we'll have to ask somebody else i don't know the answer to that uh, the next question is ideal phone scope spotter combo. I think we talked about this before. You know, I love the 95 STX with the uh, phone scope. I like the iPhone 10. That's what I use. I've been gr getting great video with that. Um, you know, I think any great spotting scope that you get out of, you know, the big three. Um, I think the 85, 95, you know, um, I've even taken some really good pictures off the BTX. Um but I think that eighty five ninety five, uh, I think you're going to get the best, the best images out of. Here's another question: uh, Ideal twin spotter setup. 
Um, I feel like I have, for my eyes, the best twin spotter setup. That's a pair of um, Cody you sold them to me. Two yeah. uh, STS 65 millimeter tubes, which the STS is the older style Swarovski. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the 25 to 50 wide angle eyepiece and what you need to understand is that that's what makes exactly my twin setter spotter setup i get questions all the time well, they, w- they want to save the money on the they 20 by 60 the money and, that- and it's like the whole thing for me that makes that setup is the 25, is the 25 to 50 power. wide angle yep. eyepiece the They're- 20 to 60 eyepieces it's a totally different setup. I have people go, well, I've looked through the 2060s twins. I don't like them. I'm like, you're not even looking through the same setup. That It's yeah, comparing it's, apples to oranges, in my opinion. I could not agree more with you. Um, and you noticed that I said when, I, when I'm doing the, the 65, the old, you know, we talked about this in a prior question. One of my favorite pieces of glass is the 65 spotter, you know, HD with a 25 to 50 and I just like that setup in those. And because that 25 power, I have to go back and look at the actual stats, but it's field of view is it's almost as wide, if not wider than the 20 power on, on the 20 to 60 eyepiece. So why would you not use it? Right. And it late and it lends itself to the, to the twin spotters. And then he asks where to buy the twin spotter adapter. Um, Benny Wells Benny out of Wells. Prescott, Arizona. If you want to send me a direct message, I can give you his uh, information. Wells Manufacturing, uh, great guys there. Good dude. Uh, this question in it says uh, any suggestions to keeping rangefinders from fogging up during late season snowy hunts? And Cody, I would you know, take that as well as rangefinders and binoculars and spotting scopes. I, I would tell you that I think fogging up tends to be operator error most of the time. Not how, all the how time. So? Well, because I see guys, you know, they go hiking up a mountain, they have their hat brim low, and they're they're kind of breathing down, you know, into the optic, and, and all that heat's rising up, and it fogs up, and they kind of sit around like wonder, if you turn your hat backwards and let that air flow a little bit, you, you won't fog your lenses up near as much. Um, the other way to combat that is, is that if your binos, and I know this is hard and but a lot of people wear their binos on the outside of everything. I get it. I understand why we do that. But if you were to keep your binos closer to your chest and inside the the you know where the heat's coming from, and when you go to take your binos out and use them, you're you're not putting cold against your hot face. You're putting warm to warm, and you will find out that you will not fog your 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 glass up near as much. And that's what I was just gonna say is you know take your binos inside if, if you're in a travel trailer situation, if you're or, if you're, or tent or anything, or tent where you can warm them up. If you're driving at all in a vehicle to your hunting spot, keep yep. them warm. And you you nailed it, warm to warm. Warm to warm means less fogging. When yeah. you get a warm head on a cold piece of binocular that's been outside your pack or outside your tent or outside your truck and it's at whatever temp it is well, outside and you put that up to anything warm, it's going to immediately it, fog. It's also, you know, like, you know, we've been selling just a ton of these, you know, bino bandits. And I love those things for for ambient light and you know blocking out the sun at the brightest parts of the day. Ain't gonna work when it's but cold. But I am flat out telling you guys that when it's super cold and your body's super warm, and you're trapping all that heat, it you you've got to you've got to give some airspace in there and, and let thing let the heat dissipate from your face. So yeah. and and that's another point too. Like when you're hiking, I'll even have my binos and just have like my kuyu 145 and mm-hmm. i'll put them inside oh, next absolutely. to my skin because i don't want to hike up to a glossing point with jackets mid layers on i'm down right. to the very lowest layer and then as i sit down to glass then i'm putting on layers uh, but warm to warm is the is the warm key to there. warm is the key and then if they do fog a lot of times if you have sun 
you can turn them where the sun hits the bino and it will make the fog go away. Right. You can wipe them to try and dry them as well. Well, and that's when like the buds or or a or a soft len- lens cloth, cloth yeah. not glove or t-shirt or anything abrasive. So, um, yeah, and then the other thing is probably the 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 other one that I think is really important. Um, don't breathe on them. <laughs> yeah. Don't breathe on them. Yeah, I've had to do that one a few times. Best lightweight, affordable tripod head for BTX with 65 millimeter with ProMaster 325 tripod. Yeah, I just, I, I just, su- uh, uh, Surrey uh, VA5. I, it's, it's my go to head now. Okay. Um, no questions. If, if your budget only allowed for one spotter. Or fifteen by fifty six on a tripod. No, we've covered we've, this, we've but covered it fifteen fifty six. Well, all, all day long for me. And I would ask, what are you hunting? Like, if you're up yeah, in the northwest true. and you're not hunting coos deer and you're not doing real super long range, you know, glassing intensive, maybe a pair of tens on a tripod and a spotting scope is you your know. best bet. If I'm a, just and, hunting and elk, some of these we got to take at face value. If he's just saying you get one, you know, one. The, you know, you either get the 15s or the spotter. I, I'm, I'm taking the 15s because I'm going to use them more. Right. Um, what scope is the best on the market for around the 1 to 1,200 range? And I don't know if he's talking about 1 to 1,200 yards. No, no, no. I think he's... To, is he say, does he what say, scope <laughs> is the best on the market for around the 1 to 1200 range i think he's talking distance so measuring from one yard to 1200 yards well if he's measuring distance i i I really like the 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 uh the hd5s and hd6s from uh from loophole right now um you know they've they've got two turns of the turret they've got a a two dial indicator an actual you know an actual indicator you're not counting lines um uh, they they have a definitive zero stop um i think the glass is 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 good as loophole offers um and you know for anybody that's kind of shooting you know maybe their one scope is getting a made eight eight fifty something like that with that second round of the turret it's taking a three hundred win mag with a hundred and eighty grain bullet and it's 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 pushing it over the thousand yard mark so if that's what he's talking about absolutely for sure um i have really really been liking the 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 loop holds for that um and there, you know there's some other models the zeiss has got um some z4s that'll push that mark or i'm sorry z4s uh, uh the v4s um and the v6s um you know sarovsky's got their x5 uh you know uh, vortex certainly has you know their 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 uh, uh vhs and and long range scopes and their uh their PSTs, you know, six to twenty fours. There's a there's there's a lot that'll push that yardage. Um, some of them are just better than others and have different bells and whistles that make it easier. Um, people ask me all the time why I like the the loop hold so much, and it's because it's still presented in a package that's not um, so giant. You know, like it's not a two pound scope. You know, I mean, it's not thirty two ounces. <laughs> Um, and some people don't want that. They want a middle weight, you know, a middle weight, um, uh, uh, rifle and they don't want an overbearing giant military tactical style scope. And that's, that's the thing that I like most about that, that scope combination is it, it's still, you know, as low profile turrets and, and it just does a really good job. Next question. How do I choose the right tripod? Oh, well, that's a, that's a, it's a, it's, it, there's a lot out there. And I think what people really, they need to answer a couple questions for themselves first. A, are we going with one tripod or are you going with a two tripod system? Um, generally speaking, I go with a two tripod system. I have a lighter weight, but still sturdy. Okay. So in that three pound range, um, maybe three and a half. And then I also have an 055 aluminum with a, you know, a, a, a sturdier head 
that I keep around the truck or maybe I just have to walk out quarter mile, half mile, something like that that I'm using for long range stuff or when the, when, you know, I can stand or I can sit and use it when it's really windy or stable or, or whatnot. So I think that's one question you have to answer is, are you trying to go middle of the road or are you trying to, to, to have both ends covered? There's no wrong answer. Um, but I think you need to answer the question is, do you want flip locks or twist locks? Um, I am starting to lean way more towards the, the, the twist locks. I can keep them cleaner. I can keep them silent. Um, they slip in and out of my pack easier. Amen um, to that. I really, um, in all my years of dealing with twist locks, I've only had one snap, you know, kind of a problem, and I kind of attribute it more to operator error than not. Um, and uh, so... Twist, twist is the way to go for me, yeah. man. I twist locks, twist. In, yeah. yeah, I, I, it, it's in, in. There's so many more offerings. So much quieter. Yeah, so many more offerings than they used to be. So yeah, and then, um, and then you need to decide, you know, aluminum or carbon. Um, I know the, 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 the you're going to save some weight with carbon. Um, in order to get the same stiffness, um, you know, you have to go up in price in carbon, um, but at the same time. Um, you know, it kind of comes, I mean, there's a lot to wade through because if you're going with one tripod and Jay, like you're using, you know, the 733 and, you know, I can make an argument because that's a middle weight tripod. It's a, it's a, it's a bigger tripod that you can stand behind, but yet you can compact it enough that it goes in your pack easily and you're using a middle sized head and you've obviously proven that you can glass from it spotting scope vtx twin spotters you name it and you're all going from you know i think you're still using the 128 um which we offer the 128 um guys you just need to answer those kind of questions as to again are you going with the one or two tripod system um do you like twist locks or flip locks do you like carbon or aluminum and then the the, the other question that you have to you know ask yourself um Am I going to stand or not? Um, because I get that question a lot. Well, I, you know, some guys have to stand, and generally speaking, it kind of throws them into a different tripod. So um, those are the four things that I would think about most when, 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 uh, when purchasing a tripod is is the, again, the carbon or aluminum, um, two tripod system versus one, um, the twist locks, flip locks, and then um, are you going to stand or not? Cody, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, how much of your day consists of of talking to customers? All of it. Okay, so from so basically when you start to when you finish, it's yep. on the phone talking to customers. And my wife wants to kill me once in a while, but she loves me and she's very tolerant. Um, I pretty much make myself available to people whenever. So um, after hours, weekends, well, that's yeah, your I business. just, I, that's my business. This is what I do. This is what I've, you know, this is what I bring to the table is that my level of customer service and the, in the level of customer service at go hunt. Um, if you've seen the conversations and, and the ideas and the ideals that we try to, um, push to, uh, is it's, it's about the customer experience and the feedback that we are getting from it is nothing short of incredible. So, um, yes, there are people that I call on the weekends and make sure that their shipment got to them. There are people that, you know, I call just to make sure that, you know, they know that their shipment's on the way or did they get the tracking number? Just, just to make sure. Maybe sometimes I just call it to say thanks. Yeah. I, I email people, you know, I, I don't, I don't see every purchase that comes through, but I, I go through and, and look at, you know, all, all the purchases and, and, you know, we had a couple purchases this weekend and I sent them a. You know, uh, I can't do it with all of them, you know, but I, I, I try to find, you know, and look at ones and, and I try to, to, to make that a personal approach and say, look, I, I appreciate your business. I appreciate the fact that you used our gear shop and that you made the purchase without our assistance. But when you get your product, please give me a call. Um, you know, this is the product we've chosen. This is what I like about it. And I, and I, and I'm, I make them know that I'm well aware that they purchased that from us. And generally speaking, you know, we get response from those guys and they, and they absolutely love the, 
the personal touch and the in the uh, you know and the it, and it's it's not just a thank you, but they just appreciate that someone's you know watching and caring. Got it. a couple more questions here, sure. and then we'll wrap up. It says, Jay, how hard is it to keep your twin spotters in collimation? Uh, where can I get the bracket? <clears throat> so I've used them for over a year now, and I've never had them knock out. Um, I am pretty careful with them, but I do slide them in and, my, in and out of my pack. I'm hiking, you know, desert sheep, coos deer, mule deer, elk. Um, use the heck out of them. I've never knocked them out. Um, the bracket, like we said, Wells Manufacturing in Prescott, Arizona. If you want to send me a DM, I can get you that information. Well, and you need to also tell them too. If you know if someone's looking at buying two spotters from me, call me and 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 I'll work up the price for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you you got. I'll me. take care of them. Yeah. Uh, this is let's see. No question. Just wanted to thank you and Cody for what you do for the hunting community. Um, Cody get these a lot I'm super grateful when I get these messages it's super humbling to be able to be in an opportunity to help people I know your personality is one that wants to always help and you give your shirt you know shirt right off your back to someone um, and that's how I try and operate as well sure um, so I just I love getting messages it, like it, this it, you know because I get questions all the time don't you get tired of this you know are people hounding you well, yeah, that's kind of the point. If I didn't like people and I didn't like telling them about glassing and how to find more game, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do what we do. Yeah. I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoy giving this message, and I mean, this. Um, you know, we didn't. We I didn't prep for any of this other than to know that you and I are doing a question yeah, and answer. It's kind of like when you know your your customer Chris Tanner goes on a deer hunt and you help him out, and it just yeah. comes to fruition. <laughs> You know, and um, he has a successful hunt. You helped him with his optics. You helped him with his strategy and his plan and how he was going to glass those bucks up. And, you know, he shoots the biggest buck of his, of his life, of his career, and, you know, 107-inch buck. And that just kind of put the icing on the cake, isn't it? It's, it just makes it all make sense. And, and, and really, I get value, you know, out of knowing that guys are, are listening. It's humbling is, man, it, it, to say the least. I mean, it's, you know, when guys call up and go, man, I'm actually talking to the guy on the podcast. Yep, you are. And, hey, well, you're you're just a regular guy. Well, I try to be. I mean, yeah, that's, <laughs> I, I hope so. Yeah, it's a little humbling. And uh, and I just appreciate the opportunity because it, uh, it allows me to get my message out there. And, and, and really, which comes down to this, have fun. Yeah. You're, cool. you're out there in God's country roaming around, you know, as my mom used to say, where God left his overshoes and, and just... Just every day out there is 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 memorable. Every day out there is you're learning something, and you know, and and for the most part, you get to see all that wonder. And uh, and I just I can't get enough of it. I just wish I could do it every single moment or every single day. Awesome, buddy. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing with us. Thanks for you know giving us some some great answers. And thanks for doing what you do. I want to remind the listeners. Reach out to Cody at 702-847-8747, extension 2. He has not worked his way up to extension 1 yet, but he's on his way. We're getting there. And optics at gohunt.com. Cody, God bless. Thanks. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Jay.